Hey guys, it's Lou. Uh, as I've kind of been notifying everybody, I'm going to be restarting Space Pirate Sim over on a new channel. If you haven't seen the trailer, it's going to be up here in the corner. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and set up your own world. When I was doing the original Space Pirate Sim, there were quite a few people asking me to make a scenario for it. That way people could just jump in and play along. But... Uh, I'm not going to do a scenario because a lot of mod authors don't like their mods being redistributed. So instead, I'm going to put the mods I'm using out as a collection and you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to use. But uh, critical to all of this is just setting up the world that we're going to be playing in. Key to this is going to be a mod called Star System Generator. And what this does is it will clear out all the planets, all the voxels, etc. from a world and regenerate it using custom parameters. So I've already set up kind of a uh, test tutorial world, and I'm gonna show you the settings I have on it. So if I go over here to load game, we have our SPS starting world, edit settings. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna start a world in creative, and you're gonna wanna start it as an empty world. We're gonna go to our mods, and at the top, you're gonna want the star system generator mod. In my case, right below it, I'm going to have the water mod as well because I want to be playing with the mo water mod. And then any modded planets you want to use, you have below that because the star system generator mod is going to pull from your modded planets first while you're going through and setting up the world. So if I go to OK, that's good. And then under advanced, uh, we want to go down here and I believe we need to turn off economy. Um, I'm not exactly 100% sure what that does to the mod but in the guide it says to have that turned off so click that off okay okay and we're just going to go ahead and load in all right here we are we're in the world as the text on my screen says uh this can take several minutes uh and the game will look frozen but don't really worry about it 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 can be kind of uh performance and intensive on lower end computers so just be aware of that. You'll want to customize this to fit on your machine. In my case, what we're doing should have no issue at all. All right, so first thing we're going to want to do is hit Shift F10. This brings up the item spawning menu, and we're going to want to spawn in a data pad. So if we go ahead and pick that up, this is just one of those uh, items you've probably seen in-game from random loot containers. You can name them, and you can have text in them. So in this case, we want to name it uh, forward slash SSG for star system generator. And what we're going to do is we're going to load our parameters into this data pad and the mod will read from this and use that information to generate the world. Now I've already done some preparation on this, so I'll just copy and paste this over. All right, so I've already done some preparation. I just copy and pasted that over, uh, but I'll go ahead and walk you through it. So clear queue Whenever you're first generating a world, it's going to essentially make a list of everything in, in memory. So we want to clear that list. From there, we want to do add random, which will completely randomize the world. From there, we want to remove a couple planets from that list and re-add them with custom parameters. So in this case, I have P3549. I'm removing it as a planet and I'm re-adding it as a moon with a smaller diameter than it would normally spawn with. And because it's added as a moon instead of a planet, it will appear in orbit around another planet, basically. Same thing with uh, Penumbra. Uh, it's going to be re-added as a larger moon that orbits another planet. Um, we want to remove Teal. And we want to re-add it at its maximum radius because that's the recommended size. And we're doing the same thing for Helgen. We want to remove uh, Silverna as both a planet and a moon because that is a neutron star we're adding to our system. So we want to re-add that as a star and put that at the very center of the world's origin. So everything will be centered around that. And then we have a couple added asteroid belts and asteroid chains that will spawn around random planets. And then recreate at the bottom. We'll go ahead and clear all currently made voxels, so the asteroids that spawned in when I first spawned in, and any other planets that are in the world. So we just go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now that we have our data pad figured out, we need to go ahead and do forward slash SSG for star system generator. And this appears to be case sensitive. So read data pad. Oh. 
That explains why this was not working. If the command isn't working, you might want to double check your title. Uh, but your the title of your datapad needs to be SSG. So now we can run this command and it's going to generate our world. You can hear the sound kind of messing up there for a brief minute, and I'm already done. It only takes me a couple seconds on my machine. So now we can see we have this big star along with our normal sun over there, and we have all these planets that are spawned around. So if I go back into my inventory, we're given this data pad. We can right-click to read it, and we can go ahead and create the GPS markers for all our planets. And we just need to turn those on. There we go. So we see all our different planets that are going to be in this system. At the star or at the center we have our star, which is what we had to define specifically. If we didn't remove that from both the planets and the moons, we could have multiple of these spawn around, which we don't want. We only want the one in the very center. But every other planet has spawned uh, seemingly correctly. Let's see. So we've got a rogue moon, Penumbra. We've got Teal over there. That's the one we're going to end up starting on. Uh, we have all these other planets. There's Helgen right next to Teal, which is nice. Uh, over here is a good example of uh, a moon orbiting a planet and a asteroid belt orbiting the moon. So if I go in here, we have uh, Ortelius up there. We have... P3549 over here. Uh, looks like there's multiple in this system because it has that dash one at the end. And then around this, uh, and then around this moon, we have a uh, belt of asteroids just going all the way around. So that's the kind of stuff you can get with Star System Generator, and I think it's quite nice for flavor text reasons. But if we go over here to Teal, this is the one we're going to start on, the one that's max size at 120 kilometers. We want to find a nice spot to settle down at. Um, now, the reason I wanted to start on Teal is because I've not really played on water planets before. But I did go ahead and s create a starter ship that we can just kind of plunk down. So we'll set it down over here. I think over here looks like a nice spot. And we're going to want to use the strap uh, trapped starter ship. That's just for my scenario that I'm going to be doing. Oh, slow down my spectator mode. Hit B to align to gravity. And if we just kind of set her down in the bay. All right. Control space, F6. Now we're in the world. There are a couple dents in this already. I'm going to be adding more of those here in a moment. But we want to make sure this is sitting in the water. And in fact, I want to go ahead and turn off uh, up thrusters. Tug a block off. We want this to be floating. There we go. And I will rock this back with the gyroscope. That way it stays kind of level while we're in it. So, you can see we have some water inside. That's fine. That's just the water mod being the water mod. Um, everything on this ship is currently sealed. And just for flavor text reasons, we're going to go around and kind of ding up the ship. Add some flames, add some bullet holes, all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to mess with these programmable blocks because they're actually running scripts. This can close. Now, importantly, we don't want to have too many holes in this. So up here is fine. This is sectioned off. But the way the water mod works is it will keep you afloat based on uh, pressurized areas of the ship. 
So this hole is okay uh, because this doesn't actually get down into the center of the hangar. But if we were to have a hole up here, the entire front of the ship may sink. So we want to kind of be careful of that. Another thing to be cautious of is on this uh, trapped version of the ship, I do have a couple warheads placed around, and that is for the scenario. So what's going to happen is if I go back in here, put that away. If I go back in here, uh, on the left side over here is our medical room, and on this side is a cryopod. So what's going to happen is if I get into the cryopod, everything is fine, but if I get back out, oh no, we have a reactor overload in 45 minutes. Uh, so in 45 minutes, those warheads will be going off, but if you need, there is a button here to just reset that. So, we need to be careful of those warheads warheads as we're dinging this ship up. We also want to kind of limit uh, explosives inside because there are a lot of careful, carefully placed components in here. Um, like, I can't really damage these timers at all. I need these to be functioning. So, I'll be... I'll probably add a particle or something, a exhaust in here, and make it so I can't actually come in this section of the ship. So let's actually go ahead and do that real quick. If I, like, stand in the door. Turns out it's kind of hard to break things in a uh, attractive way, we'll say. There we go. So now we have this damaged door. I can't actually open or close it. We'll say that's cordoned off for the purpose of the scenario. Up here we have the electrical room. I've got a couple reactors in here. Uh, I, I'm going to want to damage these and I'm going to want to damage that up there because that's our jump drive. That's fine. Okay, so yeah, we don't want to have a bunch of uh, superconductors from our jump drive. Similarly, I'm going to want to damage these uh, reactors, but I'm going to stick a little uranium in them. So if I go back to my spawning menu, if we want to spawn uranium ingots, we'll say like three each. Okay, and if I look at this, I can then hit... Uh, I thought I could hit spawn into targeted container. Guess not. Maybe it's only if I'm looking at a cargo access point, so I'll just go in here. Uh, F10. Twenty. Spawn object. Give me that. We'll open that. Um, re reactor. Say like three point one two. 1.1, The purpose of this uranium isn't necessarily to uh, be overpowered. Again, anything you spawn in, you're kind of... This is entirely custom. It's how you want to play. I want a little bit of uranium to start out, but I don't want to... Uh, like, dump myself with a ton of it. So, be because I want it to be available to me as a resource, but I don't want to negate starting on teal, which is doesn't have uranium on it to begin with. I didn't realize how high the water level in here got. All right, so, close this. Let's see. This is fine. I don't think there's anything in here I want to damage, because this is all cosmetic stuff anyway. Um, so we'll go ahead and ding these up.
There we go. So I've got these damaged now, but not destroyed. Um, the purpose is a couple things. I, I don't want to start myself with uh, too easy access to the uranium that's in here. So them being damaged like this means I can't actually pull the uranium out of them through the cargo system. But also I'm going to be playing with the uh, radioactive uh, reactors mod. I think that's what it's called. It's like whenever the, whenever the smoke is coming out of them like this, you'll take damage if you're too close. Um... And I've never played with that. We're going to see how it affects the scenario. What else can I kind of ding up to put myself at a disadvantage in here? All of this needs to stay because all this is critical to the scripts. Anything in here, I don't really need to ding up because it's all cosmetic stuff. There's nothing super val valuable in any of this. Or steel tubes. Yeah, there's nothing really over here. Alright, so we have a dinged up ship. I'll launch a couple more rockets on the outside. Oh! I poked a hole. Whoops. I didn't want to poke a hole. Hold that thought. See, this is what I meant by, uh, be careful when you're doing this. There we go, that should repressurize now. Um, I'll fix the hole over here too, in case it's causing issues. Yeah, there is a actual hole there. Yeah, see how that popped up immediately as soon as I did that? that? That means this is now buoyant again. All right, there we go. One dinged up ship. Uh, is there anything else I'm going to want to ding up? Down here, I've got more warheads, so these will all go... I think I'm good. Everything else on the ship should fall apart once the uh, scenario actually starts and the uh, warheads go off. So, that's as far as I'm going to ding this up. I will go ahead and take a blueprint of it. That way you can have a pre-damaged ship as opposed to having to damage it yourself. So now we have a couple different variants. We have the only trapped starship, which you can go ahead and damage yourself. Or we have this pre-damaged one, which if I copy to clipboard. Yeah, it still has all our damage on it. You can see all the dinged up hulls. So this is good to go. Our world is set up. Now what we're going to want to do is uh, save, exit to menu. We're going to want to go back into load game. We're going to want to edit our settings. Mods. We're going to want to take star system generator off. And then from here, we can go ahead and add any other mods we want to use. So I'll be using the mods that are in the uh, Space Pirate Sim Season 2 mod list, which will be down in the description. But I encourage you to add or remove or tweak anything. I've not played with all the uh, modular encounter systems mods I'm going to be using in this. So it will be interesting to see how that pans out. Um... I hope you guys have fun. I hope you guys play along with me. And uh, again, check out the trailer for the new season if you've not seen it already. New episode will be coming out soon. And I hope you guys enjoy. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to the new channel. And thank you very much. Hope you all have fun. Bye-bye.